When Cascade Lake X was announced at the beginning of October, I remember everyone insisting Intel was rushing this out to get a drop before Threadripper because, well, we know Threadripper is going to crush it. But Cascade Lake X was going to bring double the price performance, and if it came out a month sooner, maybe it could get some early sales. Of course, at this point, we know that that's not true, that Cascade Lake X is actually coming late November, likely after the launch of Threadripper. And I think we all know what's going on here. Intel does not want to release these processors before Threadripper is out and they see the final pricing because they know they might need to do last minute price drops just like AMD did with Navi after the RTX Super announcement. But what a lot of people don't know is they actually have quite a bit of room for price drops if they really want to hit the nuclear button. Now, what I'm about to show isn't really some gigantic secret. Everyone knows that uh, OEMs and boutique builders who buy processors in bulk get better prices than the rest of us peasants. That's not news, really. But what is news to some people is how much money Intel's making selling these in bulk and Regardless of how you feel about distribution and consumers having to pay more uh, because they're only buying one unit, um, I doubt that many people know just how much money Intel's making in profit per one of these 18 cores and therefore how much they could drop prices if they really needed to. All right, so let's just jump right in here. This is a leaked snippet from an internal Intel document giving you some of the information of how they're calculating revenue and their expected profit from Cascade Lake X. Now, 35 million units of supply. And yes, that's correct. Now, for those wondering why me and other tech tubers sometimes say the GPU market doesn't even matter compared to the CPU market for AMD, it's not just because of mindshare, everybody. It's because it does not matter, right? Intel, at its maximum amount of revenue, could make $24 billion dollars from just Cascade Lake X. Now, of course, they're not going to. That's maximum potential revenue. And if we look over here, that means they would expect to sell each Cascade Lake X chip on average for $689. Keep in mind that all of these dies, some of these come from a disabled 980 XE. So there's really no differentiation here. It's just the cost of all of the wafers. How much can they on average sell these units for, and they're willing to sell these half off to OEMs, right? They're perfectly happy selling these on average for $344 per unit. Now, keep in mind what that means, right? The cheapest Cascade Lake X that we've even seen, I believe, was like $570. I, I honestly don't remember off the top of my head. And that's not some bargain, people, or at least that's not like Intel being generous, uh, they're willing to sell these, and most of the money comes from OEMs, not from people buying on Newegg, for less money than the cheapest one they'll sell you on Newegg, on average, right? So we can't know all the details, exactly what it requires to get this cost, uh, but this is, at least on this document, shown the best price they'll sell them for. And this is not a typo. They will sell the 18-core for under 500 and they have some really interesting bonus <laughs> prices here if you buy a bunch of them in bulk it sounds like they have a lot of 12 cores they want to make sure they get rid of and i'm sure there's other caveats here that i'm not privy to but i think you guys get the overall point of what's going on here i did this analysis of how I really did not think Cascade Lake X looked like a bargain at all compared to Zen 2, that I thought it should be way cheaper. $979 for the 980XE is no bargain when this is 28 when you have a 28% better 3950X coming out that costs less. So it's 10% weaker, so it should at least be 10% cheaper than what they're selling it for, right? Except that if we remember AMD's uh, yeah, right, 10% weaker than the 750 price, and it's also less efficient. So my opinion is it should be under $500. But what we know is that Intel's also <laughs> thinks that it should be $500. So guys, what's the point? 
point is that further price drops are coming for all Intel products for consumers. The stuff you buy on Newegg is not some fixed bottom of the barrel price Intel's going to be stubborn about. They have room to go much lower. In fact, if anyone remembers in my Whispers of Golden Cove video, I talked about how one of my sources who works with motherboards said that he's already been tipped off by Intel that price drops are coming soon that we're looking at $50 price cuts on a lot of i9 and i7 models, and that, frankly, we could look at an almost $50 price cut across the board, or at least something around a 10% cut. Things are going to continue to move down in price, and that's not going to leave Cascade Lake X, you know, absolved from this situation. The fair price of that 18 core, if it can barely stay above AMD's 12 core, is at most $600, and if you ask me, due to how inefficient it is, it should be below $500, but I, I doubt it'll get there soon, but eventually it might. This is widely known to motherboard manufacturers that Comet Lake will not be out in time to really do anything to the 3950X. If anything, it's going to preempt Zen 3's launch, and there will probably be Zen 2 speed refreshes before that. And again, all of this, more price drops should continue all the way through Zen 3's release. Intel doesn't have that much until, well, at least uh, Golden Cove is out and on a fully working 10 nanometer, which is looking real dicey. On that note, I want to add some quick follow-up notes to that those leaks I showed a couple weeks ago. So a lot of people have mentioned to me that there's no way Sapphire Rapids is on 14 nanometer um, and that it uses Willow Cove. And the fact of the matter is I never said it would be on 14 nanometer. I just said they could bring coves to 14 if they absolutely wanted to and that they are targeting 10 nanometer for Sapphire Rapids, but they hope to get it on 7 nanometer. I think some people saw those slides and said I was suggesting that Sapphire Rapids would be on multiple nodes or something. No, all I'm saying is it could be on 10 or 7, and they can put coves on 14, 10 or 7. Although I have no confirmation that any of these coves are coming to 14 nanometer, even though I know that's been rumored. And yes, I understand as well that Willow Cove is the target for Sapphire Rapids, but the person I talked to said that Intel's been trying to pull up Golden Cove as much as possible. Although, to be honest, I really don't expect that to pan out. I pretty much just expect Willow Cove and Sapphire Rapids, uh, especially if it's going to be on 10 nanometer. And it it, it, it is going to be on 10 nanometer, right? There, there's like no chance Intel really gets 7 nanometer running in 2021. But they were hoping to. And that's what the point of that Whispers video was, is that Intel was hoping to do all of those things I showed you. And I think people deserve to know what Intel's trying to accomplish, even if they probably won't accomplish it. Just like if I'm optimistic about Zen 3 and I say all these great things AMD's working on, some of those things might slip to Zen 4 or 5. But I think you guys might want to know what they're trying to accomplish, even if they don't accomplish it. And Intel is trying to accomplish a lot right now. But I guess one thing that deviates from what a lot of other people are saying is this 10 nanometer yields thing. And I think that was, in my opinion, the biggest bombshell from that Whispers of Golden Cove leak, that 10 nanometer is actually starting to work. Now, that's not saying that semi-accurate's reporting is wrong. They almost did cancel 10 nanometer. But what I'm being told now is that surprisingly, it's starting to yield well enough that they have optimism for 2020. Not like they're going to yield anything close to TSMC, but that it will be a real node. So let me be 100% clear about that. Intel was trying to cancel 10 nanometer, uh, or, or they came close to canceling 10 nanometer, but now they're not because they see it as a very real option for a large amount of their products. And this matters because getting a working 10 nanometer by 2021 you know, one or two years before they get to 7 nanometer, if they even get to that in 2023. We'll see, right? Yeah, Intel's track record ain't great for their roadmaps. But is getting decent 10 nanometer Sapphire Rapids parts out with large core counts, same with Ice Lake, is at least making it so they're only half screwed. And there's a very big difference between 100% screwed over, 75%, and 50%. 100% screwed over means that 
by the time AMD has products 50% better than what they have now with Zen 2, Intel would have about the same as now, which means they would be a third or a fourth as good. Right now, they're about half as good. A third or a fourth as good means people start switching over because it costs more money to keep using Intel for free. And what I reported with that Whispers video is that Intel might actually be able to not keep up with AMD, but not be much more than half as good for the next two years, which I know the most optimistic thing you can say is maybe they'll only be a, you know, a half as good as AMD over the next two years is certainly not something to be proud of, but hey, that's what we're looking at. And again, certainly Intel could screw up and we could see them just completely fall apart. But at least what I'm being told now is that things are not a worst case scenario. AMD can now grind Intel into the dust with Threadripper if they so choose. But honestly, after doing the majority of this video getting towards the end here, I gotta say that my opinions of Threadripper are not as optimistic as they've been, right? I, I was thinking, you know, one to $1,200 maximum. Uh, what did I say? 1500 you know, maybe a little less. That type of stuff for the entry-level 24 core on Threadripper. I don't know. When I look at how much worse Cascade Lake X is, like really analyzing it, I think AMD is going to go for milking. I also reported that TRX40 had really no reason to be more than, I don't know, $400, $500 is the entry price point for those motherboards because they found ways to make it not quite as expensive as people would expect because of uh, more advanced PCB materials over just using a bunch of redrivers to keep signal integrity for PCIe 4.0. Again, watch that video if you want to know what I'm talking about right now. But, you know, I think this is just a time for maximum profits, unfortunately. Uh, oh, unfortunately for consumers. I guess good for AMD stockholders. But I was really hoping, or should I say, I really do hope that AMD goes for the kill on Cascade Lake X here. I mean, you can see Intel delaying their launch and expectation that AMD might just do this. But I get the feeling that's not happening anymore. Threadripper 3000 is the titan of processors. AMD can charge whatever they want. They can keep selling Zen Plus, like I've been saying video after video for a while now, and just let that <laughs> compete with Cascade Lake X. Because frankly, they're, you know, two-year-old, well, yeah, yeah, by 2020, two-year-old, Red Ripper 2000 will be just as good as Cascade Lake X. So why drop prices? Why crush them when their previous gen is still competitive and they can just keep churning out these 12 nanometer FinFET Threadrippers for no money at all? I don't know. I, I guess I don't see why they would do that anymore. So we know that launch is coming very soon. But man, if you are looking to upgrade now or you need a new build, just build your AM4 or I guess Threadripper 2000 product. Now, if you want a good price, Cascade Lake X is a joke, and Threadripper 3000 is probably just for there who need over 24 cores, which let's be honest, who needs more than 12 cores? Who needs more than eight cores? Almost no one. AMD controls the market now when it comes to HEDT. It's just not even close, and they're close to completely dominating the consumer market. Right now, Intel selling the 9900KS um, for like 520 bucks or something. I think it's already sold out and Silicon Lottery is going to sell 5.2 gigahertz golden samples for like 1200 or something ridiculous. That's all Intel's got anymore. Their very, very best, very, very best golden sample is better than AMD's like $500 chips in gaming by like 20%. If Zen 3 is 20% better, we're not looking at golden samples here for consumers, right? The difference between a 3900X, a 3600, and a 9900KS is like 20% difference between all of them in overall gaming performance, even in 1080p. If that's true, think about that. The 3900X is barely really any better than like a 3600X at gaming. So if Zen 3 is 20% better even... That means AMD's $200 processors compete with Intel's top-of-the-line golden samples. I don't know what Intel's going to do in 2020. I think Intel could have a resurgence in 2021, definitely by 2022. But until then, it's going to look really bad.
Don't know how else to end this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe if you did. And speak with me on the Discord about all of this information that we keep getting over this last quarter of 2019. All right. Thank you for watching.